The forest was dark, and behind her she could hear the man running, crashing through the undergrowth. Scared, she fled deeper into the forest until she could go no further. The trees seemed to close in around her as she could hear his breathing not far away, his footsteps getting closer and closer. And then she turned around, and in the moonlight she realized that he was not a man, but a werewolf. Ow! Jonas! Did I get you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but why is it that so many of our myths and stories focus on the moon? Is it because the moon is the largest object in the night sky? Well, to find out, we're going to explore the science behind Earth's fascination with the moon. Over the centuries, the moon has been believed to be a lion, a wolf spirit, a man, and numerous other gods and goddesses. Perhaps most bizarrely, in the Middle Ages, the moon was thought to be a giant ball of cheese. Because of its regular appearance in the night sky, many societies around the world have also used the moon to measure time. The Chinese calendar, for example, is based on the cycles of the moon. This cyclical system gives them a starting date for each new year that changes in relation to our calendar, and a cycle of 12 zodiac years that each have a representative animal. Our European calendar was also originally based on the moon's motion around Earth, but this lunar calendar was adjusted by Pope Gregory XII to match the length of time it took Earth to circle the sun, giving us the modern Gregorian calendar. All right, so today, through careful observation, we know that the moon revolves around Earth like this. Now, the moon orbits Earth once every 27.3 days. It also rotates once every 27.3 days so that the same side of the moon always faces Earth. Pretty cool, huh? The reason we can see the moon is because it reflects sunlight, and half the moon is always in sunlight. Now here's a brain teaser. If half the moon is always lit, why does the moon appear different shapes in the night sky on different days? Well, the reason for this is that as the moon orbits around Earth, the amount of the sunlit side of the moon we can see alters. We can't see the shadowed dark side of the moon against the night sky, so the appearance of the part of the moon we can see changes. Watch what happens to our view of the moon from Earth as the moon orbits around us. About every 29.5 days, there is a new moon, when the moon is directly between Earth and the sun. After that, the moon cycles through a series of phases until it reaches a new moon again. So, we know how the moon moves in a regular path across the night sky, and what causes the phases of the moon. What else do we know about the moon? And how do we figure it out? Scientific lunar observation really got started when Galileo Galilei made improvements to the early telescope. In his day, Galileo made good use of the telescope and observed mountains and craters on the moon's surface. This led many to think the moon was made of rock, and that a person might one day stand on its surface. But it wasn't until fairly recently that we had the capability to go to space and check out this idea in person. In the 1960s, one of our most famous presidents, John F. Kennedy, challenged America's scientists to be the first nation to put a man on the moon. And we did. The lunar landings provided all sorts of information about the moon. Through moon dust samples and drilling, scientists found out that the moon was made almost entirely of rock. So, it is about 1.7 times less dense than Earth. Which is the same as if the moon actually was made out of cheese and Earth was made out of solid concrete. By dating those dust samples, scientists also think that the moon is over 4.5 billion years old. That's one old man in the moon. And, using satellites, scientists confirmed that the diameter of the moon is one quarter the diameter of Earth. We also know that it is 384,400 kilometers from Earth to the moon, which took the Apollo astronauts three days in the lunar spacecraft. But this is a distance which would take over 480 days to drive by car. 
Well, today we know far more about the moon than our ancestors did, and we're still acquiring more and more scientific knowledge. But the moon is still largely unexplored, and for most, it still represents an object of amazement. Well, in your lifetime, we'll all learn much more about the moon, but learning is driven by your own fascination. Remember, never stop exploring your world or its moon. So see if you can find out something you don't know about the moon, like its mass or its temperature, and then share it with your class.